Like a black and white cookie, the full-size van market is clearly divided. On one side sits a trio of old-school body-on-frame vans from Chevrolet, GMC, and Nissan. On the other rests a triad of modern unibody haulers. Leading this progressive pack is the 2017 Ford Transit, a model that beat out its two compatriots, the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter and the Ram Pro Master, in our most recent comparison test of big vans. Despite more than half a century of sales in Europe, the full-size Transit remains a relative newcomer to the US market, having been formally introduced for the 2015 model year as a replacement for the long in toothed body-on-frame Ford S-Series Naik and Olin. Compared to its cell-handling predecessor, the surprisingly docile Transit is a revelation. Its massive windshield, stripe front suspension, and well-tuned rack and pinion steering provide the big van with a wave of civility no Aziris could claim. Turn in is sharp, the chassis is composed, and an expansive forward view makes it remarkably easy to pilot the big beast through city traffic. Van enough to be your van, don't think for one second that Ford has wassified the full-size van, our Transit 350 test vehicles claim £4,230 payload is greater than the Ford F250 Super Duty pickup trucks. No doubt, the Transit 350 is designed primarily for hauling heavy loads. And Ford offers innumerable ways to do just that, as the model is available with two distinct wheelbases, three body lengths, three roof heights, and as either a passenger wagon or a cargo van. Also, the Transit offers a choice among three engines. Our Transit 350 cargo van came to us wearing a coat of $150 caribou brown paint and sitting on the longer, 147.6-inch wheelbase. With the tweener body length and topped off with a medium eight roof, the Transit 350 cast a shadow some 19.6 feet long while standing 8.4 feet tall. Opening the split tailgate reveals 357 cubic feet of cargo space, with enough room available for a six-footer to stand upright. There are studio apartments in New York City with fewer square feet of floor area. A passenger side sliding door provided easy access into the two Seat Transit 350's cargo space. While buyers can opt out of windows after the billers. Our test van came equipped with a piece of privacy glass for the sliding door and the rear doors, as well as rear window differs, for a total of $650. A $940 power running board that exposed itself upon opening the sliding passenger side door, and tucked itself away upon closing the door, was a feature that seemed superfluous given the Transit 350's low steep in height. A fixed running board is available for $160 van, that's quick, if money is to be spent augmenting the Transit 350, we'd recommend dropping the $1,865 needed to replace the Transit 350's standard 275 hp 3.7-litre V6 with a 310 hp twin-turbocharged 3.5-litre V6 fitted to our test vehicle. Dubbed Eco Boost in Ford parlance. The four-seed induction engine pulled the 5,423-pound cargo van to 60 miles per hour in just 6.8 seconds, and the big brown box jumped past the quarter-mile pole after 15.3 seconds at 90 miles per hour of more importance to cargo van consumers, though, is the engine's 400 lbft of torque that comes on at 2,500 revolutions per minute and works with a standard 6-speed automatic transmission to blast the Transit 350 from 30 to 50 miles per hour and from 50 to 70 miles per hour in just 3.8 and 4.8 seconds. Coming to a halt from 70 miles per hour took only 171 feet. Impressively, the Transit 350's acceleration and braking figures compare favorably with those of the last Kia Optima SX 2.0T we tested. Mind you, we tested this Transit 350 cargo van completely unloaded. Throw a few hundred or thousand pounds of junk in this box, and expect the Transit's acceleration and braking figures to take a hit. Still, with so much torque on tap. We can't imagine the Transit 350 EcoBoost ever feeling completely overwhelmed. With or without a payload, though, 
don't expect much of a cargo van's ability to tackle turns. Around our 300 foot skid pad, the empty van's Hankook Dynapro high Telti tires pull just 0.60 grams before the stability control system declared enough fun had been had. Fuel economy was similarly unimpressive. We averaged 14 miles per gallon during the transit 350s stay with us. Although the EPA does not rate the transit 350s fuel economy, a 1,028 pound heavy transit 150 passenger van fitted with the same eco boost engine managed a more satisfying 22 miles per gallon when we tested it roughly two years ago. That people hauling van sported a taller 3.3 1 to 1 rear axle ratio. Though, while our cargo van came equipped with a shorter 3.73 to 1 rear end, a $325 option that also includes a limit slip differential. Coupled with the $485 heavy duty trailer tow package, our test van was rated to tow as much as 6,800 pounds, which is 1,400 more than a Transit 350 Eco Boost cargo van equipped with the standard 3.3 1 to 1 rear gear. Fantastic voyage, without any cargo on board. The Transit 350 cargo van's rear end bounced around on the less than deal roads near CD headquarters like a basketball being dribbled by a Harlem Globetrotter. On at least two occasions, our morning coffee leapt out of its cup as we drove to work. Nevertheless, those who commute on smoother byways are bound to appreciate that there are five cup holders carved into the Transit 350's hard plastic dashboard, plus one in each front door pocket even though there are only two seats. Although the Transit 350 cargo van is far from a luxurious, the full-size van can still be equipped with its share of frills. Our test van's $1,495 interior upgrade package added items such as a 4.0-inch color display screen in the gauge cluster, a leather-wrapped steering wheel with audio controls, cruise control, Bluetooth phone connectivity, and vinyl flooring front and rear. An additional $1,270 brought lane departure warning and a 6.5-inch touchscreen multimedia system with navigation running Ford's latest Sync 3 software. Although menu structures were logical and the system quick to respond to inputs, the screen's far away location at the top of the dashboard made it necessary to stretch to physically enter commands. Fortunately, Available voice commands help to mitigate that flaw somewhat. Other items tacked onto our Transit 350 included a set of front wheel well liners for $295, a trailer brake controller for $230, a pair of massive heated side mirrors for $220, automatic headlamps and rain sensing windshield wipers for $195, an entry keypad for $95. Backup sensors for $295, and an annoyingly loud backup alarm for $125. Unless you enjoy angering your neighbors or have a circular driveway at your home, the backup alarm is an option best left unchecked. All told, our wannabe UPS truck wore a price tag of $45,670, pricey, but not far off the fit charge to get into a Mercedes Benz Sprinter with similar equipment. Compared with similarly specced body on frame alternatives such as the Chevrolet Express 3500 and Nissan NV 3500 cargo vans, though, the Ford costs at least $5,000 more. Still, we'd argue that the Transit 350's mature on road manners, low load height, and torque twin turbo V6 justify the higher cost of entry over its less advanced peers. Progress much like a good black and white cookie, is worth paying a bit extra for.